Welcome to Solar Punk Life. I'm Joe, and I'm here with Tori and Jen, and we're going to be talking about the Loudoun County Adopt a Teacher Facebook group. Tell us about this amazing thing that you guys have started. How do you adopt a teacher? So it's actually really simple. Amazon has the ability to create wish lists. You go in, you title your wish list, and then you begin to add different items that you need. Your address of your choosing gets attached to the wish list. It stays um, covered so nobody else can see it, but Amazon and the person who created it. And you take that wish list and you put it onto the group with a little blurb about who you are, where you teach, little bits like that, because we know that some of the community is searching out specific schools, certain grade levels, certain specialties, things mm -hmm. like that. and they can go in, purchase an item off the wish list, one, more than one, the entire list sometimes, right. and it ships directly to the teacher. So the group was started about a month ago now when I saw a program over in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia that was where you know, teachers would get adopted to get items that they needed for their classroom. I did some looking around thinking that this was a really great program and did not find something really similar in our area. Come to find out we do have one program kind of like it, okay. but the teachers have to go to a warehouse to pick it up and with gas prices being where they are right now, that's kind of not as feasible as it was last year. Sure, sure. So I thought. Why not? Let's give it a shot. Worst comes to worst, nothing comes from it. Mm -hmm. So I created the group, kind of set the rules, and began to share it. And it just blew up. Within the first couple of days, I had about 500 members, wow. and ABC News began to contact us. <laughs> uh, it started with an interview of one of the teachers participating. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to interview for that one, I said, no, I think it would be better to do the second option, which was to do the follow-up interview for the morning show so that we could kind of keep the momentum sure, going. Sure, absolutely. After that first evening episode came out, we quickly spiked to over a thousand numbers. Wow. Within a couple of days, we were above 2,000, and then within three weeks, we were above 3,000. Wow. I ended up talking to um, Loud Mirror Times next and did an interview there. Apparently one of the teachers or community members knew one of the reporters and was like, hey, you really kind of want to get you know, in touch with this person and kind of get going on this story. And so I did that interview and then again was contacted by Loud Now. So over the course of the month that this has been open, we've had four different interviews with the news and this makes our fifth one right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice. And I know I've seen that there have been some teachers that have been fully adopted really quickly and they get their whole list and, and we've seen reaction posts from them that are just phenomenal. I've also started to see that there are businesses mm -hmm. that are adopting teachers, which is, you know, good press for them as well. Yes. I myself have adopted a teacher and, and bought a couple of things for them. Uh, so this is a fantastic thing that you guys are doing. and. The reason why we were interested is, you know, as solar punks, is we like to build community. We like to build um, systems that are self-organizing, right, and are just helping people to to be the best that they can be. And as we all know, teachers are very much underappreciated, underserved community, and that that negatively affects the kids in their classrooms. It can, yes. So what kinds of things um, have you seen that are kind of your favorite things you've seen on the wish list that, that teachers have asked for I so think far? My favorite ones right now have been the nurses. They're looking for items like clothes or underwear for when kids okay. at school need a change of clothes for whatever reason. And they get absolutely no funding to help with that. Right. And every single one of the nurses have been fully adopted. Wow, that's fantastic. One within 15 minutes. And now Loudoun County is, is a, a pretty big county mm -hmm. in, in area. It's got a lot of schools. So we have 18 clusters. So okay. that just shows you that essentially means we have 18 high schools. 
um, or 17 high schools, 17, right? Because we have Plus our other schools. Other. So we have 18 total clusters. So 17 of those are the high schools, and each of them have middle schools and elementary schools a part of that cluster. And then our other cluster um, services anyone else that isn't under those categories. So things like charter schools, private schools, preschools, just to be like, okay, what does this look like to support all teachers and our academies and yes. North Star. Okay. So they're all kind of wrapped in that others cluster. Gotcha. Gotcha. And so how many teachers are signed up right now? Over a thousand. Yeah. So yeah. we have um, one of the four that's helping with everything. She created a Google form that filters the teachers into their cluster locations. And currently we have over a thousand who have filled out the form, but we know they've not yeah. filled out the form. Right. Gotcha, gotcha. That's a lot of management to organize and just get everybody labeled properly. That's a big data management problem. Yeah. <laughs> so how many people do you have running this group? For data management, it's two. Two. And then we handle the community outreach. And it's completely voluntary. You guys aren't mm -hmm. being paid for this. It's just another way to reach out and help. Yes. Uh, and that's that's fantastic. That's Super awesome. What are some of the challenges that you've experienced so far? Managing the data, for yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've had to kind of help teachers learn how to attach their addresses. We're constantly sharpening the system. And, you know, we, we if, when we see a problem, we're like, okay, how do we simplify this? So mm -hmm. just today, one of our teammates um, on our form that we have the teachers fill out, it's about five questions. Um, and when I initially created it, um, I had it where, let's say they, I asked, what cluster are you in? I asked them to please put, for instance, Freedom HS. Right. But the reality is if someone's typing it in, they may say Freedom High School. Well, it sounds silly, but like when you put high school, it's not populating to the cluster. So today we made it so that um, it's multiple choice. Okay. So now we're not going to have that um, where we're correcting things because yeah. that just puts more work and time. Obviously, with a thousand teachers, if if we're editing, you know, even twenty five percent of them, it it, it, it adds up. To adds a lot up. Of time. I spend over an hour each evening either going through and approving posts, checking the main um, data sheet to make sure the new ones are looking right, and hoping they'll filter over. Um, <laughs> and then prepping the teacher post that we put out each day where we highlight teachers. Have you considered putting up a, um, a donation box, like a buy me a coffee or something like that to help compensate for your time in managing this system? No. No, no you want <laughs> all of the help to go straight to the teachers. Yes. yes. I mean, and it's beautiful because two people on our team are teachers, so that's really, really cool to have them be part of this because and one was a teacher. Yeah. Oh yeah, she was. Yeah, you're right. So two are currently teachers, one was a teacher. And so that's really beautiful. Yeah. Um I call it my I call it a passion project. Sure. Um so I think it's a beautiful thing to be in a um for instance my scope with community outreach is something that fuels me regardless of me getting paid or not. And so when I reached out to Jen, I was like whatever you need, these are my skills. How can I be used? Right. And then we connected. And so it, it's just, it's so cool seeing the teachers and the nurses and the community members just posting and being like, Jen has expressed it too, like you feel supported by the community. So it's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. The past few years have been really, really hard on teachers and it's, it's not Loudoun County per se, but there's been a lot of strife in the county yeah. when it comes to the school. A lot of things said about teachers and the schools that aren't true. Yeah. Um, but it's nationwide. Mm -hmm. It's anytime you look at anything to do with teachers, there's so many negative comments and it just really begins to eat at you and hit mm -hmm. your morale down, whether you want it to or not. Mm -hmm. So what we have found is a side effect that I know I really didn't expect is that teacher morale is boosting through yeah, the roof. Because they feel appreciated. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of teachers who were considering quitting aren't now. Wow. They want to be back in the classroom because they realize they actually are appreciated. We had one that shared with me how, well, shared with all of us because it was a post that I approved, how she had been wondering for the past few years, was she even making a difference anymore? Yeah. And this really helped her to realize, yes, she is. Yeah. Even if it's just something small, she's making a difference.
we all get into echo chambers and feedback loops and and the, with all the trauma and the, and the hardships of the pandemic and the political environment that have been around for the last two and six and more years, everything becomes divisive. And when budgets aren't growing, but there's inflation and there's rising gas costs specifically. And in this area, a lot of teachers have to commute from out of the county because unfortunately it's a very expensive county to live in. Yes. So routinely teachers are coming from other states even or other you know, counties to teach in this county. That just adds extra costs and extra stress. Mm -hmm. Teachers already work long days beyond when the school bell ends. Mm -hmm. yes. Grading papers, right? Researching new education techniques, getting certifications, extracurriculars. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. And, and when you have a disconnection between the teachers and the parents, right? Because there's fewer in-person events or people are busy and whatnot. It's really easy to not get that appreciation and not get that feedback. And I know the PTAs have worked really hard to try to help, you know, with combat some of that stuff. They, like at my school, they do an amazing job doing what they can to make us feel appreciated. And it does help, but there's a lot of schools that don't have very active PTAs. And this cuts right to the heart of it, right? This is people directly helping other people, uh, saying thank you in action if not in words, um, and then that grows because now that those teachers are supported, they feel more comfortable in the classroom, they have more energy to help the students. Those students will probably hear the stories of how their teachers were helped, which will make them be more generous in their lives as they grow. It's just, it's, it's a win-win, 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 win. Yes. And kids are learning that it is good to share and give and yeah. that, that generosity pays forward. Yeah. And that's another important lesson that yeah. I think all of us are remembering yeah. after everything we've been through is that things do pay forward. And yeah. that uh, one small thing can really boost somebody else and make their day and can completely change their world sometimes. Totally, completely, 100% agree with all of that. We have actually had two board of supervisors, I think, uh, join the group, right? Well, I, two, oh, two school board members are part of the group right now. Yes, I know. Then, I know at least one is. I haven't looked yeah. through. Okay. But the uh, two of the board of supervisors are putting it in their newsletter. Oh, wow. So that'll provide even more outreach. I'd love to see more of them do that. Yeah. I'd love to see more of the, like, I want to know more of the businesses that are participating, but a lot are choosing to stay anonymous. Okay. So it's hard for us to kind of do shout outs unless other people, you know, find out and share about it. So, for instance, a friend of mine that I teach with at Parkview was fully adopted by a local gas station. Okay. And they funded... 90% of her ESY stuff basically and the rest went to a regular classroom and she teaches at a title one school during school year too. And what's title one again? Those are our lower income students. Okay. So I thought, but I just wanted to be sure. Yeah. Title one schools, uh, majority of the children are below the poverty line. So that school hits kind of a different level. We don't always see as much participation from the PTA in those areas just because parents are very stressed, very worked, and they don't have the time or the energy to, to do it. Right. And in one of the wealthiest counties in the nation, we still have a lot of people that fit into that category of below the poverty line. Yes. Um, and uh, would ordinarily look at um, Amazon as being a problematic company because they, you know, they swoop in and they end up closing small businesses yeah. as a result of out competing them on price and stuff like that. But in this case, using their tool for a wish list to organize and make this direct contribution is such a powerful capability that we'll completely overlook it. <laughs> and we'll see, and that's the, the joy about the wish list is it has a little button that says bought at a different store, yeah. which will pull it off the wish list and you can go to another store and purchase the same item and then ship it to the teacher's school because they right. list where they teach. Yeah. And we've got some businesses choosing to go that route. Sure. And then all we ask is if you do that, hey, let us know so we can let the teachers know to check the school. Right. 
Um, and then I also saw that there were some people offering up supplies that they already had in yes. hand. That was one thing we've been broached about. Hey, you know, we've got these sales coming up. Is it okay if we purchase items and put it out for teachers? I'm like, yeah, totally. Yeah. If you have something to donate, put it out there. They tend to get picked up pretty quickly. Yeah. So. And that mirrors uh, my experience with the Buy Nothing group that I'm in for Sterling, mm -hmm. where people will have things that they don't want to go into a landfill, mm -hmm. or they'll need things that they cannot, that they choose to want to see if the community can offer to them first. Mm -hmm. Right, because the, the goal of the buy nothing group is to buy nothing, right? Don't cause new things to be made if you can help it. And yeah. so we've had people donate everything from televisions to uh, meals to cardboard boxes for moving to, you know, like whatever. Yeah. And it just goes around and around in the community. They actually also had a moving, um, a moving box full of books that they would then one person would take it, they would take the books they wanted out of it, they'd put some more books into it and then put it back out and the book box would go around. That's similar to the little libraries that are around the county. Mm -hmm. We have a little free library on our porch, the, so when people are coming to drop off compost, they can get a book too. <laughs> um, well, that, it's just a reminder um, through this initiative, um, people want to help. Yes. It's just that they don't always know what it looks like or they feel it has to be all or nothing. For an example, um, that's why we're telling people don't feel like you have to ad completely adopt a teacher. Like yes. buying one item matters. Um, buying one item from 10 teachers that have nothing purchased on their list, that is just as powerful or providing a service. Like I know, I feel like there are a few other businesses that were providing certain services for teachers. Like I know kind of like what I'm doing where they're like, if there's a service they can provide for teachers, then that's a route as well. Just to be like, it's okay if you don't have the money to spend. Yeah. Um, you may have an expertise mm -hmm. as in our team working together, yeah. um, or you may have a skill that you can provide for a teacher. So, so it's really cool. As teachers, we're always looking for experts to come in and talk with our students mm -hmm. about what we teach. Um, so the kids can kind of learn why is this actually important to learn about? Mm -hmm. Why are you teaching me this? Mm -hmm. And so, that sort of stuff that that's a good way to help out too. you know connect, connect with your local school mm -hmm. say hey this is my field I'd love to see if any teachers at your school would like us to come in and talk yeah so just the other day one of my friends Katie she's a small business owner in the area and she was sharing how she used to be a PE teacher and she was like similar situation to me she's like i want to help but what does it look like if i can't donate financially and we brainstormed yeah. and she ended up being like oh i could mentor new pe teachers so then i sent her the list the master list that had you know by subject and said hey look at all these pe teachers that you could reach out to and say hey, do you, would you like to be mentored? Would you like me to connect um, fitness and health professionals to come and speak to your students? Yes. So it was so cool because it was a reminder mm -hmm. if you don't have the money, like we get it. Like not everyone has extra to share. Yes. And, like that is okay. Yeah. And if you don't have extra to share and you can't offer a service, you can always share. Yes. Share. the video you yeah. can share the link to the facebook group you can let people know about it you can tell people in your county or your state that this kind of thing can happen and start organizing one of these in your own space and i know that you guys offered to mentor other people starting groups we've had i know frederick county maryland started one before we offered since we've offered, it's been Prince William, Clark, and Fairfax. And then one more actually down in Richmond, Henrico County started as well. Yeah. So that's been cool. So we'd, we'd love to see more, you know, counties get out there and do this sort of thing. I'd love to see this kind of become a nationwide movement. It, it takes very little to get it going. We've got a lot of the base leg work and the forms can be, you know, copies made, shared out we worked out a lot of the bugs. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. And the smaller counties aren't going to have as big of a struggle with the data as the rest of the, like we did, because there's not as much data for their areas. There's not as many teachers. Is there anything else that you want to cover for our viewers or that you want to share with your community in video format that we can highlight for you? A lot of people want to credit us for this. 
And I don't, I know personally, I don't want the credit. Mm -hmm. The credit goes to the community. Mm -hmm. All that was provided for them was a space to do it. Mm -hmm. If the community hadn't have come together, none of this would have happened. It would have fallen straight on its face. Mm -hmm. So Loudoun County is the one that deserves all the credit. Yes. And to go off of that as well, it's really powerful to see um, groups in different counties developing. Um, so if you see this video and you are like, it's not in my county yet, reach out to us. Go to the Loudoun, go to the Loudoun County Adopt a Teacher Group. You can see the four admins and you can message any one of us and like, we will help yeah. share the stuff that we have. Our hope is that this is not something that is exclusive to our county, but rather a national movement mm -hmm. that says, hey, teachers, nurses, anyone related to education, you matter and you are worthy and you're seen by your community. And so, yeah, right now, I think this country is looking for ways to be more positive with mm -hmm everything going on and this is one simple way to do it and you impact more than just the teachers in the long run mm -hmm. by improving our ability to teach your children by helping us get these items and for some of us we wouldn't be able to afford to get it mm -hmm. you are helping the students which in turn helps the community because these are going to be our next generation who are going to be running hospitals, running schools, running small businesses. A lot of them will come back to Loudoun like I did. So because of the resources that I received through Freedom High School, um, I am who I am because of LCPS and FCPS. I went to Fairfax County my first eight years. So I told the team I was really passionate about making sure FCPS had a page because I went to a Title I school for elementary school. And so it's so beautiful to see that started now. Right. Mm -hmm. So to know <clears throat> these students that are currently in our schools, a lot of them will come back and be our leaders one day and our teachers and- Or even go to other countries. Yes, yeah. and absolutely. And help build those countries. Yep. As absolutely kind of corny as it sounds, these are the future leaders who are going to, many of them make impacts mm -hmm. when not just in Loudoun County, but across this country. Definitely. So the more this spreads, the better I personally feel it's going to enhance our country. Mm -hmm. It's going to enhance other countries. It's just, it's beautiful to see. It absolutely is. Uh, thank you for taking the time today for meeting with me. This is fantastic. I, I love everything you're doing. I'm going to try to adopt some more people myself, but I'm certainly mm -hmm. going to try to get more people adopted and possibly get this set up in more counties with, with the reach that we have. Uh, obviously gonna be sharing the video around uh, a lot. Thank you so much guys for coming out today and for talking with me and for sharing the story of this. I, this is amazing. Uh, I got goosebumps listening to some of the stories there. So uh, just, this is awesome. Keep doing great work. Totally appreciate it. I know you don't want the credit, but thank you from a parent of a student in, in Loudoun County. Thank you directly. So, and as always, do good, be good. Thanks for watching.